Samantha? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. So nice to see you. So to start us out in your own life, obviously you're a conservationist, a field ecologist, and an animal rescuer. Insane titles, really amazing work. A lot of the themes in this that have been represented in this documentary are very near and dear to you. Um, what is this project being represented um, in this documentary mean to you? Oh gosh. Um, it's, I mean, it's served as a wonderful platform to raise awareness about our current efforts at Oja Nueva and you know, how many cats we've rewilded and rescued since the film. So that's the most important thing for me is raising that awareness and, and hopefully getting people to um, support our cause. What was this filming process like? Ah, a whirlwind. <laughs> um, it was it was really exciting. I think it all came about very naturally. Um, like we had so much archival footage before even meeting the filmmakers and then had a very natural relationship with them. And I think that really helped to create, you know, what they what they ended up doing with all the footage over the years um, of living in the jungle with us. Can you tell me a little bit about just this process beyond what we see on screen of you and Harry raising this baby ocelot together? Oh gosh, beyond what you see on, you get to see all the intimate details, I think. But, um, you know, I think um, what you don't see is like more, I guess, the kind of like internal struggle being, you know, very hyper aware about this animal, specifically Keanu at that point, um, having to be raised by humans and why, and like kind of like, you know, how helping that one individual is amazing. But, you know, especially for me, it was all about like how, how do I actually further my efforts to address the root cause behind this issue and, and move beyond that so that there aren't more future Keanu's that are taken from the wild? Um, so I think, yeah, I just tried to battle through that on a daily basis. And, and you get to see a little bit of that struggle. But of course, there's only so much you can fit into an hour and a half. <laughs> Absolutely. And you represent it beautifully. Um, what do you think that, you know, us as human beings can do to help make sure there are um, fewer Keanu's in this world? Great question. So I think, I mean, the most important thing is every day people make choices when they when they purchase something. I think the biggest thing right now is, especially since the pandemic travel has become heightened, everyone wants to travel again. Um, it's just being like a very responsible and sustainable tourist, making sure that the entities that you're supporting when you're traveling abroad are good ones with strong ethics, wildlife ethics, um, never buying wildlife parts. I think that's, that's pretty huge. Not a lot of people relate feather earrings or a claw necklace to an animal being taken from the rainforest, but it's directly related. And I think those types of small decisions and you know, self-educating, educating the people around you about your consumer decisions can be super impactful. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Do you have any other tips on just how to be a smarter and more conservative tourist? Yeah, I think traveling when you're when you're traveling, doing the research, I think that's like sometimes we just want to pick like the closest, easiest thing. But just putting a little bit more effort in um, to the research behind these entities before you go and you put your money towards visiting something is 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 very important. And um, and also being conscious of your footprint footprint when traveling, which sometimes can we can lose sight of. Um, you talked a bit about earlier about this just being a great platform to raise awareness for the things that you're doing. When people see this film and this documentary, what do you hope that they take away from it? What do you hope they go out and want to do? Yeah, I hope that they, you know, I hope that they like connect to it on a personal level. I think that it can be very impactful in different ways. I hope that it kind of helps um, people who are maybe struggling with something similar to what Harry or I struggled with can, can kind of see like the light at the end of the tunnel and see like even like how much things have changed since then and how much, you know, Oja Nueva has grown, for example, since the film and, and just really like see that light at the end of the tunnel and, and that everything's going to be better and to just keep persevering and um, in whatever you're passionate about. I know there's probably so many things, but you speak so passionate, passionately about your work and these efforts. Do you have a favorite thing about your work and the things that you've done? I guess, I mean, there's so many things. I think my favorite thing about our work now is, you know, just being confident in, in kind of like honing our skills and developing methodologies for rewilding that are actually working really well and just being, you know, feeling like, yes, we're, we're pioneering something new, um, but that we're also at the same time using whatever voice we're given to kind of have a voice for these issues. I think that's the most fulfilling part of all of it. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Melissa. How are you guys? Hi, Sydney. Good. Nice how to are meet you? you. I love your background. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. So nice to meet you as well. So with this, we see an extremely unique documentary experience because we see um, footage that was created by Samantha and Harry, and it's beautiful and it's intimate. Can you walk me a bit through what the behind the scenes process was like? Yeah, when we when we first met them, they actually came to us with a hard drive of footage that they had filmed themselves. Um, and so it was very clear from the beginning that they were able to 
capture this journey, this process, the, the science of reintroduction. Um, and so that was something that we really embraced and wanted to work with them on for the longer story, which was with Keanu, the second ocelot. Um, so the behind the scenes was, you know, we all were a creative team. We worked with them and, and made sure that they had the right cameras to really stitch together this very intimate, powerful narrative. Absolutely. Now, what was it about Harry and Samantha's story that you guys both knew was going to be perfect for um, a larger story? I mean, one, you know, for one, like the two of them had different backgrounds. Uh, and, and that was something that drew me to them when I first met them. I was down in the Amazon on another project when I randomly met Harry in a hotel. And, and so I, you know, Harry's incredibly charismatic and magnetic, even like he, he tends to draw people into him. And Samantha uh, is very, very composed and she, you know, she's incredibly articulate and very, very intelligent um, and, and just super in control and motivated. And so they were both very different. Um, and, and, you know, Harry as charismatic and magnetic as he is, he's also very raw. Um, and so they were so different and that contrast was really intriguing. Um, and so you, know, you ask yourself, why are they both here? Um, and one of the things that has drawn me over my career to wild places is like, why do, why do certain people end up in these wild places, these wild corners of the planet? Um, and so that was something that, you know, Melissa and I really wanted to dig into and figure out what was it that made them end up in these two places. And of course, for Harry, it was it was the fact that, you know, he served in Afghanistan on the front lines and and was looking for a place to kind of find solace. And and with Samantha, you know, she obviously had a, a, a troubling childhood with a father that was was, you know, sometimes abusive and was an alcoholic. And so they both came from these very different backgrounds. And that provided this really um, interesting uh, way of looking at how trauma affects us, um, but also how, you know, it leads some of these people to the same places. Um, and so that kind of was what we started off on. That's in insanely beautiful. And you can see that so well in the way that you guys have conveyed that. So, so much love for that. I was wondering if you each had a favorite aspect of the final result. There's so much beauty in this film and um, a, lot of, a lot of good moments. Final aspect of the final result. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think some of the, some of the moments with family is really, uh, was largely unexpected and really powerful. Um, in the edit, you know, we knew we were following this story, the, this, the, the kind of the healing power of nature and the story of this wildlife, uh, rehabilitation. But I think the layers of of, le of love and family um, and also of letting go and the things that, you know, ultimately the kind of the bravery that it takes to love knowing that you will eventually have to let go, I think is um, something that I took away from it and, and I hope, you know, many other people do, do too. Also the making of the movie, there was a lot of conversations that we had internally and, and with ourselves and with Samantha and Harry um, about what we had been through. So it was in some ways kind of a therapeutic process just making the movie. Um, but yeah, in the end, in the end, there was a lot of themes that, that came out that I don't think we anticipated. For me, it's simple. It's just the responses of people after watching the film. You know, I've had people coming up to me and sharing their stories, um, their own sort of struggles with mental health. And that was one of the things that we hoped this film would do, that it would allow people to have conversations that they maybe haven't had before. And that's such an important part of, of you know, um, moving forward with mental health struggles is just talking about it. And so that's something that we've been seeing happening after screenings. How are you, Harry? I'm good, thanks. How about you? Oh, I'm doing well. So nice to see you today. So to start us off, this is a beautiful and heartfelt story created by between you, Samantha, Trevor, and Melissa. It's stunning and it's getting a lot of love. First of all, what does it mean to have your story represented on screen like this? You know, I think that the main and important thing is that I always wanted to make these animals known. Um, and this documentary just came about by chance. You know, I started filming it as a passion and this passion, you know, it, it kind of it rolled into this kind of like natural and, and, and beautiful thing. And I think that a lot of uh, problems with documentaries is that things are forced a lot. Uh, but when something is so natural, like, uh, you know, how this documentary started out, it becomes, you know, uh, you know, as I am biased, but it becomes a, a, a beautiful piece. 
So I asked uh, Samantha this, and um, I'm asking you as well. Beyond what we see on screen, what were some of those details of raising Keanu, and what did that mean? So, uh, you know, it was it was a hard thing to do. Um, definitely took a toll on me, but at the same time, it also gave me uh, it also gave me this kind of drive, and it gave me this purpose. And so, you know, I have got so many fond memories of of you know raising Keanu but at the same time what you don't see in some of that is where I'm being completely chewed by mosquitoes and I'm being you know and I'm sick and you know all of these things so I have you know a, a lot of incredible memories but at the same time you know it wasn't all easy it was quite difficult a lot of the time. So you were filming this on your own time and then you teamed up with Trevor and Melissa what was that process like? Yeah so we started I started filming with a passion uh, and and then obviously as as when you will watch the film if you haven't already you see that obviously some things uh you know happen and so uh i later on bumped into trevor uh and trevor was actually in the peruvian amazon doing uh something for national geographic on anacondas and uh we just crossed paths and from there on uh, we were going to make a small documentary. And then about a month later is when Keanu came into the mix. And from there, we brought down all the sound. We brought down all the cameras, different lenses, different camera traps. And it just went, you know, full on from there on out. And so it it uh, it started off so kind of like authentic. And then is when the big cameras really started coming in later on when Keanu was there. I love it. Now you touched on this a little before and I find it so interesting about um, how your guys' filming and the way you filmed it really created a more personal dynamic than other documentaries. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on what that process was like and uh, just how it sort of came about in the final result? You know, I think that when you're trying to make a documentary that is really going to do some good for this world, you really need to be the change that you want to see. And so a lot of my life has been with uh, depression and, and PTSD um, and also being in the jungle. And so to combine them is very important. And so the vulnerability which is shown on screen was, you know, a combination of permission from the filmmakers, but also me just having to tell myself, you have to open up, you have to be, uh, you have to be vulnerable on camera, otherwise there's no point in trying to make a documentary which is going to be powerful if you're just going to be you know, standoffish. Absolutely. And we see so much of that vulnerability from you on screen and there's so much beauty in that. And it's so important to see when people go and see this documentary, what do you hope they take away from it? I just hope that a lot of people, when they see this documentary, they're okay afterwards. It can be a very uh, triggering and um, upsetting documentary. But I guess what I want people to take away from it is that they're not alone. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And um, even if you feel uh, like you are alone, you're not. Um, and, uh, you know, you should spend some more time out in nature because that's, you know, where the, the healthiest place is, honestly. <laughs>